good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Vajiha Aisha. Um, I work as a lecturer in curriculum design at the Arts Teaching Innovation for University of Melbourne. My co-presenter today is Dr. Neera Rahman. Neera is a um, teaching uh, and learning uh, curriculum design person at the ATI at University of Melbourne as well. Um, before moving forward, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which I live, work and study, the Boomerang and the Waiwurrung people of the Eastern Kulin Nation. Um, I also pay my respect to the elders past and present, and I want to acknowledge that this land was never ceded. Um, now, today's presentation um, it has three key terms in it. It's co-creating, ecosystem and sustainable education. We would want to talk about co-creation and sustainable education first, and then we talk about the ecosystem. Um, and Neera, I will let you take over. Um, Co-creation, the way we look at it's the way of creating together and collaboration. Often in the academic space, we collaborate with our colleagues, we collaborate with other academics. But uh, when uh, we think of the word co-creation, it implies actively engaging students by offering them agency um and control over their learning and teaching and it actually gives them a very very valuable educational experience because they feel they are part of it and uh next slide and uh, that's where when academics and students including even the professional staff or you know uh, industry partners uh collaborate to create uh different measures that create a very different uh, pedagogical experience and uh, pedagogical practices, I would say, and the whole that 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 practices of practicing of that creating together and collaboration is something we are calling co-creation, and that is co-creation. And when we talk about co-creation in terms of outcomes, uh, there are many different outcomes, but these are the four outcomes we think that uh, it's kind of. Uh, sort of uh, making uh, sense in the in the higher education broadly and it ensures the enhanced student engagement and motivation student engagement and motivation is something often in the higher ed sector we talk about and how we can sort of engage our student or motivate our students more but uh, what yeah and I found out and particularly I would say during this uh, pandemic situation where campuses were kind of out of bound, we found that how that really, really helped us and other academics uh, who were working in that space of creation to uh, sort of um, uh, enhance the student engagement and motivation. It promotes students taking ownership of their learning and building confidence. And that's what we often talk about that when we actually get the students in the uh, in the higher ed uh, teaching and learning space, it's not just we are teaching and they're learning, it's kind of both way. Uh, so we are also learning from them, they are uh, learning from us. And at the same time, we want to empower them and we want to take the lead of, of their learning and their academic journey. So co-creation actually can do that very well, ensures enhanced sense of inclusion and strong sense of belonging. And that is something, um, we feel that it's it's absolutely important even when the campus was there before pandemic and you know the absence of physical uh, campus as well so this is really important because uh, the sense of belonging is not just uh, you know uh, with the other peers with the institution itself and you know the whole academic uh, practices and it fosters the skills for lifelong learning and that will really relate to what Wajiha would talk about now. So Wajiha, over to you. Thank you, Neera. Um, so we consider sustainable education as something um, that is absolutely lifelong uh, learning. Um, we consider sustainable education as something that as, an, as a sort of education that develops uh, the knowledge, uh, skills, values and worldviews. Um, and these four things are necessary and crucial for people to act in ways that contribute to a more sustainable patterns of living. Um, by sustainable education, we do not just talk about sustainable development goals, though they are and can be equally important part of sustainable education, but rather the patterns of producing um, the systematic learning and knowledge processes that happen within the higher education, but also within education 
um, in general. And so our definition, we, we argue that for education to be sustainable, it should have these three aspects, planning, delivery, and impact. And these three aspects ought to be durable, empowering, inclusive, flexible, a bit recyclable, participatory, transformative, and reflexive, especially durable and reflexive. Um, so we, we want to promote this idea of co-creation, strengthening um, sustainable education, and, and we would want to pro provide um, an ecosystem through co-creation that would help us develop sustainable education. And the reason why we think co-creation is a very, very important tool and a very strong tool to be able to do this is because it allows alternate forms of knowledge. Um, it allows and explores complexities within interconnected systems. It nurtures collaboration with people from diverse backgrounds. So it's based on grassroots level inclusivity. Um, and, and so in some ways, sustainable education overlaps with co-creation. But in many ways, co-creation is, 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 is sort of a, it's sort of a spinal cord. It's sort of a skeleton that would support uh, sustainable education in the long run. I would say, what you just to add to your point that co-creation, we can call it as a very important tool uh, to, you know, the create the sustainable education space. And, you know, uh, as you and I talked about uh, that uh, student engagement and empowering students and sustainable education is something which is talking about the interpreting and engaging with the world. So that relates back to the lifelong learning, which relates back to the co-creation. So it's kind of um, sustainable, if we think of sustainable education is a big, big umbrella we want to create, it's kind of the hammer or the screws which we actually use uh, to create the umbrella or things like that. So that's yeah. a brilliant um, allegory, Nira. I, I love that example of umbrella and hammer and screws. Um, so this is our humble co-creation framework. And uh, we do want to acknowledge that this framework comes out of uh, our work, which is almost three and a half years, four years long. Um, and we've been working very closely with different elements of this co-creation framework. Now, we do come from Faculty of Arts, so our experience is based on and within the Faculty of Arts. Um, but it's also based within um, the discourse and the scholarship, literary scholarship that's available out there as well. Um, and so within this co-creation framework, we propose four levels, uh, co-design, co-delivery, co-evaluation, and co-production. And we, we posit that these four levels work within three pockets of actions. And the three pockets of actions are pedagogy, governance, and co-curricular. And so to give you an example of how these levels and pockets of actions um, intermingle and communicate, uh, in for core design to work with the pocket of action uh, of pedagogy, um, you can create an activity related to a learning and teaching weekly exercise within your subject. And so the students can choose an activity from a list that you have created, or they can modify and tweak an existing activity, or they can design a new activity from scratch. So the basic item is that the students are creating an activity that they would do within a classroom on a daily weekly basis, on a weekly basis. Like it's just a weekly uh, learning and teaching strategy. But this is co-design happening within POA of pedagogy. Another example would be a co-design within the POA of governance. So that would include students being a part of a bigger picture, students being part of um, decision-making and policy-making at sort of an executive level, um, at a governance level. And so that would mean, for example, uh, creating a document around respectful language where the students will have to interact with um, associate deans and head of programs, but also maybe industry partners in, a great, in, in, in some ways. Um, and then another, another form of the, the, pocket, the co curricular pocket of action um, example would be co-designing a film club that screens a film related to subject content fortnightly. And the academics or the professional staff members can work with students or teams of students to design this sort of very um, simple but very efficient way of creating and co-creating um, a, a, a month-long or a week-long or, or a semester-long um, film club. Uh, uh, but but the learning and teaching from this film club will, will continue um, and, and will keep on supporting the rest of the education as well. Um, and so um, uh, the, the third key term from our from our title of this presentation was oh, ecosystem. And so 
through this co-creation framework, we propose um, that a sustainable education ecosystem can be created. Um, and we use the tool of co-creation and the framework of co-creation to produce this ecosystem because um, it allows de development and production and embedding and evaluation um, of different levels um, and different um, mind frames um, and different uh, ideas that comes from students, academics, professional staff members, industry partners. So the foundation is really, really quite strong. Um, then it, 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 it improves the practice of sustainable learning and teaching. Um, and it, this kind of ecosystem would um, enable knowledge sharing and interaction on equitable basis, just because it is so much, so very much embedded in grassroots level, um, and it is so inclusive. And then um, it would definitely um, generate loyalty and a strong sense of student identity, um, but also um, an identity that is associated with the education institute these different elements are a part of. So whether you are a professional staff member, an academic industry partner, or a student. So it's connected with your, your identity because you have invested in developing something. You have invested in developing a curriculum design element of it, or you have invested in developing a, a, a co-curricular element of it. And so the fe some of the features of these ecos this sort of ecosystem would be that they have it has to be iterative. Um, and it, you cannot just develop an ecosystem right away. It needs to be developed from scratch. It needs to be planned. It needs to be developed in phases. And there'll be a lot of trial and error uh, for this ecosystem to be to work in a pragmatic manner. But in order for it to work in a pragmatic and an efficient manner, it has to be flexible. It has to be inclusive. Um, and there are other there are a lot of other features of this ecosystem that would come into play as well, especially when you, we are using co-creation to create sustainable education. Um, there are a lot of elements within sustainable education that co-creation would directly support. So we will keep on adding adding to this list. Um, we I do want to say that this has this is a work in progress for us. Um, and but I think if we if we present this presentation in five years' time, it will still be work in progress for us because um, what we have we have been creating is very iterative and it is um, it is very flexible as well. So we learn every day, but then our learning contributes to more changes, um, pragmatic changes, efficient changes, and that is what we're proposing through this co-creation framework uh, for the development of ecosystem for our, a sustainable education. Um, and now Nira will talk about our particular experience with co-creation. Uh, within the Faculty of Arts. And just to add to your point before I move on to this slide, Wajia, that we, yes, it's a work in progress and we know that there will be many different aspects coming up to this discussion later. But whatever it is from our experiences so far, we know that, you know, the planning, the delivery and impact, these are the three more important wins and these are the wins we will be looking at. So, uh, and the perspectives would be uh, you know, how we can create the durable, uh, empowering, inclusive, flexible, dur uh, and, uh, you know, reflexive system. So whatever we do, these things are actually the very key aspects of it. So that is really relevant uh, to, even if it is a work in progress, but it wouldn't really change uh, in a sort of very uh, div different way. And in terms of the co-creation at the faculty level, I would say that, yes, co-creation can happen in different ways and students can be part of it in different levels, different, uh, uh, I would say, at different powers or different categories. And uh, uh, when we are talking about the faculty level co-creation, within our experience, we actually thought of, we actually started working on this at the subject level. So it can be subject level, it can be program level, it can be faculty forum. So. I'll start with the subject level. This is something, one of the examples we have done quite a few. In our faculty, we have got five different schools. So there are uh, different schools, different subjects, but this one of the subjects, uh, Wajia and I actually work very closely with the academic, and we actually started in 2019, the discussion around it. And uh, when the discussion started, it started with the identification of the gaps. And when we started the discussion uh, of the where are the gaps, then it took us to the consultation level. And when we talk about consultation, it's not just us to academics talking to our academic colleagues in that teaching that subject. We actually included our students in there. So 
they were talking to us about their, you know, what are the gaps they feel uh, because they were doing that subject at the time. And they were very much part of that consultation in terms of what they want to see us doing and how we can make them included, their voice heard in that particular subject space. And that's how we took it to the implementation level uh, last year. So whatever projects we do, it's kind of always it's identification, consultation, and implementation. If we can go back to the slide, yes. Even at the program level, Wajiha, if you can talk about the program level and faculty forum for us. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, so very quickly, um, so the, the, the same sort of um, module, identification, consultation, and implementation is being tested out at program level as well. It's just that the students, so uh, University of Melbourne Faculty of Arts have different schools, and within different schools, there are different programs. Um, so students, we are being involved in uh, evaluating and providing feedback um, about their experience within uh, within different subjects at a program level and the program uh, some programs are being redesigned or or re reshaped or remodified um, and it's a it's a huge taking um, to actually involve students at that level but it's it's not just feedback from students it's actually having getting ideas from them including them as teaching assistants research assistants um, to make those changes happen as well. So there's an investment of time and energy and ideas from, from students as well um, at a program level. And, and, and similarly with, with the faculty forum, um, the faculty forum, we're still testing about how to actually do faculty forum properly because it's a forum where students will be involved at sort of an executive governance decision-making level where, where we, the, the, the executives of the faculty, so associate deans, dean, head of programs, would be involved in direct consultation with these students. Um, and uh, these students will be able to have their say in proposing changes or uh, helping the faculty figure out what works and what doesn't work because they have a lot, they, they have so much invested, so much energy and time invested in their program and their degree. Um, and so we're still trying to figure out how it would it, it can work, but so 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 it's a lot. There's a lot of trial and error uh, that will happen once you start co-creating at different levels as well, and once you start co-creating the ecosystem as well. Um, and what we've learned is um, there are no set rules for anything except that you need to be flexible, open, and you need to keep keep doing research and keep going back to students. So keep going back to the student voice and student agency, which Nira will very quickly now mention. Yeah, and that's where, even if it is a subject level or program level or faculty forum, whatever it is, for us, we actually use that student voice and agency as the skeleton of it, the backbone of it. So we included the student voice as at every level. But for that, we actually created a platform which is a safe space for the students to come and talk uh, about their innovative ideas, experiences around teaching and learning, and share their ideas around that. But when they are sharing their ideas uh, around uh, you know, teaching and learning, it's kind of getting back to the point, Wajir, what we said before, that uh, taking the uh, sort of uh, lead for their own journey, uh, you know, academic journey, and uh, investing into that. And that is where, uh, you know, the planning, delivery, and impact of the sustainable education really, really works. And for us, Wajia and I actually own a very unique space within the faculty because we don't belong to any particular school. Rather, we are part of Arts Teaching Innovation Team, which is uh, over sort of, uh, I would say uh, can sort of connect with all the schools and it's a central part of our faculty and that's where Wajia and I can really work as a bridge between the ac teaching academics in different schools and the students so we can get the feedback from the students and feed into the teaching and learning uh, from the policy making, from the discussion and everything. And I'll get back to the point again that the three things are always the case that identification of the gaps, consultation, and implementation. And that really connects to the, you know, the durable, empowering, inclusive, flexible, and reflexive teaching practices, which is the core of sustainable education. Over to you, Wajia. 
Um, thanks, Ira. So uh, thank you for giving us uh, this platform um, to talk about it. Uh, we would like a lot of, we, we would really like your very constructive feedback because we would want to see, we're very close to this project, so we would want to see how you think about this co-creation framework and how you think about this this particular idea that we're presenting where we say that co-creation framework, we, we believe due to these reasons could be used for sustainable, creating ecosystem that would offer a sustainable education. Um, I think the strength of co-creation is that it is um, iterative, it is it can be modified, it's flexible, it's inclusive, and it gives students and other active members a, a lot of agency and empowerment. Um, and for a sustainable education, you need these elements. And in order for sustainable education, whether you're actually implementing sustainable development goals within the sustainable education or not, um, these these elements could create a very strong ecosystem. Um, thanks so much. And just to add to Wajir's point very quickly that one of the things we always bank on that our students are very diverse. They bring a very, very diverse cultural backgrounds and understanding. And that's what helps us to understand their various ideas and explore what they want to bring in in their teaching and learning. And that is very important part of sustainable teaching. And so we just have, we have uh, Mavian Tay and Verily Tan. Hi, Verily. We already said hello to Mavian. So if you guys, um, if you had any questions, if you wanted to give any feedback or comment, you're more than welcome. Hello. Yeah, thank you, Wajia and Nira for sharing. Um, I think I really enjoyed the framework that um, both of you all shared, the um, co-creation and um, co-creating an ecosystem for sustainable education. Because I found that um, co-creation is quite an important concept because it helps us to veer away from the traditional um, forms of teaching where most of the time the teacher would be the one that is most in charge of the teaching and then a student would just sit there and receive but i like how that there's this concept of co-creation where we are able to bring students in into different getting them exposed to more um platforms yeah so not just um taking the exam but also coming up with like maybe the curriculum or like um giving feedback um to the teacher or like the institute to improve because at the end of the day the students are the ones that are received at, uh, at the receiving end of the education yeah and i think it's important to include them in the process yeah so i like how that um in the framework that you, pro you propose um it has this element at the different level so not just the subject level you want to hear the student's voice at not just um maybe the level of um the module but you want to hear it at like faculty or institution level so it's nice that um, you're considering not just the smaller elements but also including students in the bigger picture which i think is really great yeah then um, i have one small question um do you foresee that um, there will be any challenges because i understand that um, you mentioned that this is a three and a half year um, project and it's ongoing so far so i just want to hear if there are any challenges because i see that wow there are like so many things to take into consideration of so i wanted to hear um, from you mm. yeah Nira? Uh, yes, there are challenges. First thing uh, is, as you know, the students are very diverse. So some of the students for, you know, just to speak out or just to take, you know, uh, express their views is really overwhelming because they might have come from a culture where they are never allowed to share their experience or opinion. So that's one of the challenges. The other challenge, I would say the creating a safe space where students would feel that, all right, we are not judging them, we are listening to them, and we are taking their ideas. And at the same time, to make them understand the changes don't happen in one day. So it takes a time, it takes a lot of uh, trial and error. And the other challenge I would say from the academics, because as academics, we all know that we are overworked, we are just drowning with our, you know, the already so much work. So just talking to our academic colleagues when we go with the ideas and, you know, things like that, just telling them it might not be really uh, overhauling the whole thing or uh, redesigning the whole thing or too much work. Sometimes you don't even realize that you might be using some elements of co-creation already, but you don't realize it. So Wajia and I go there, talk to them as a sort of, uh, with our 
years uh, saying that we are just here to listen to you and what you do. And when you find out that, I would say the identification of the gaps and the consultation period is the most challenging work. Uh, once that is done, implementation would probably much easier. Uh, uh, Wajir, if you want to add anything in there. Yeah, um, I think there's also um, academics, at, we, that includes uh, us as well. We are very protective about our classrooms um, and allowing other consultants within our classrooms, whether they're part of faculty or external, is a big thing in the first place. So the first, the first challenge, one of the, one of the major challenges is actually just um, getting people to listen to this idea of releasing that relinquishing that control on in your classroom and giving it to students and making them uh, test and understand that it doesn't take anything away from them. It actually adds to their contribution in, in, in ways that would probably surprise them. Um, so I think that's like, um, I, I, I don't want to use the word academic egos, but uh, I think academic egos are what uh, would be one of the challenges. A few other challenges would be resources. So like Neera and I, we work uh, quite a bit on this. Um, and then we also have uh, sort of financial support from faculty when we need it to be. Like we have an annual symposium as a part of this co-creation project. Uh, we have pop-up cafe, pop cafes and before COVID, we were, ha we were offering students some food to come have, have a chat with us in focus groups and stuff. So, so, uh, so th this, this has to be some like dedicated commitment from the faculty or, or, or from, from the program or from the institute to actually support this sort of project. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to, to survive for long because it does take a lot of time and effort and energy. Um, and I think I that's it. Trust is one word, Wajia, trust. And that trust is not just between us and students, between our colleagues as well. And the trust doesn't mean that they don't trust us as human beings. Trust means, you know, whether uh, it's making any positive changes or not and yeah. how long it is taking. So trust is one of the biggest challenges, I would say, if I have to say one word. Yeah, uh, and I'm aware of time, so uh, uh, that was a good question, uh, Maybe, and thank you for that. We didn't add a slide of challenges because we were like, oh, we'll see if someone asks that question, so thank you for that. But Verily, uh, Verily did you want to ask a question? Uh, I'm kind of putting you on spot. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Verily, only yeah. ask. Yeah, go, yeah. Go on. it's it's about uh, whether it would be possible to see an example of a co-created cause. Maybe, um, yeah, I, I don't intend, I mean, See, to see the whole course, but maybe the outline and uh, how maybe the faculty work together on it. Yeah, but really, if you could, yeah, do you have, if you could send us an email, we can definitely ask um, our colleague who we worked with on the, his subject, and we could share the subject guide with you if he would be comfortable with it. But if not, we could share you our version of the subject guide because yeah. we do have freedom to do that. So if you don't mind sending yeah. us an email, um, do you, I don't know if okay. you wrote it or yeah. email, but Neera, could you? I, I, already got, put, I already put yeah. our email addresses, Wajia. Excellent. So I've yeah. already copied in on the. I already copied in on my notepad. So I think I'll send. It, cool. I'll send an email to you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And Thank if you. you see that Wajia and I are not replying in a couple of days, please knock us again because sometimes it just. You know, too much email, but we will definitely touch base with yeah. you. Yeah, and, and thank you for being interested enough to 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 see that because yeah, we're very interested in this work. Yes. Um this okay. is like our baby, Verily, so we are really excited. Verily, may I know which university you work? Uh, if I may, uh, I'm university. from National uh, University of Singapore. So we right. have uh, yep. we have a student initiative called Design Your yep. Own Module uh, yep. Program, and um, my colleague is very involved in it. So. Uh, I've attended some of their sharings, so I just wanted to see uh, right. uh, some yeah. examples, and maybe we could, uh, I could get my, co I could con connect my colleague with you, yeah, Absolutely. so that I think y'all can share ideas and work together. Yeah. That would and be great. We, we are yeah. happy to even do a Zoom meeting or things like that, and yes, yes. Uh, further. probably that would be better uh, first to get to know, you know, your expectations, sure. and, and we are happy to do that very early. Yeah, yeah. Just feel yeah. free to email us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it's just 8.15. I think we just have 30 minutes, so maybe we should all log out and um, all right. have, a, have a good afternoon, guys. Um, okay. Thank you for coming. Yeah.